Greetings, it's Carrie. In this video, you're going to see what I call a gateway ultra experience. My good friend and synonymous buddy, Carrie Sherman, came with me and he was attempting to go much farther than he's ever gone before. In fact, four times farther than he's ever gone before. And part of what I need you to pay attention to in this video is once you enter the canyon, there's no real escape. You're in it until the end. So he had a certain point, which was the point of no return, which he had to decide whether he was going to continue going forward or go backwards. So this will be the story of our adventure. Well, we are at Lee's Fish, Team Carry. Here we got Carry Sherman. Carrie. And we are planning to leave this car, which is my rental car, and then head to Wire Pass, start the wee hours in Kai and knock off Buckskin Gulch to Perea, 40 some miles in a day. So we're trying to go reasonably light, carry a bunch of water, not much, we're not gonna do an overnight, that's our plan. We're gonna be back here, if all goes well, in about maybe 30 hours. That's the, tr that's the trick. So we're gonna go rest, and then leave. So we're just packing up bags. We've got water, we've got liquid, got food, we've got some layers. We're going with no wetsuit. So this is our car camping situation. Carrie's over there putting all his base layers in. And I just got my pack sort of fitted. We've got a little extra gear here next to the car. We got some pads to sleep on. It is almost 9.15 in the evening. Our plan is to leave sometime in the wee hour. So maybe somewhere between 2 and 4 a.m. we'll get on it and head down. We're in a parking lot with zero cars. We're in the Buckskin Gulch top, not wire, not the wire path. So we've got four and a half miles to go tomorrow morning until we hit the uh, trail from Wire Pass, and then we have 16 miles till we hit the Perea River, and 19 miles to the first water source, and probably about 25 miles, about a marathon, until it opens up a little bit, and then we drop down the last 15 miles to get to Lee's Ferry. That's the plan. Here we are, 4 a.m. We are gonna be taking off momentarily. We've got 40 some miles ahead of us, a little bit of the moon, we're still alone in the parking lot. It's not too chilly, but it is cold, and we are loaded and ready for a long day. It should be an interesting day. I'm not sure exactly how it's all going to pan out. We're going to pound some water so we don't have to carry it. Eat half a banana each, and off we go. Shoes are dry. Shoes are no longer dry. So, so we are figuring out exactly what we have gotten ourselves into here. This is extremely muddy, and it is the world's longest slot canyon. It's 14 miles of slot, is that it? Something like that? Yep. And Carrie, what's the longest hike you've done or run for a day? The longest? Yeah. 15, maybe 10. Yeah, 15 miles. <laughs> so, this is pushing it. So we're doubling and a half your longest. That's exciting. And we don't know, no guarantee still, but we'll see. Here we go. So this is not something I would necessarily recommend folks do as one day. Uh, but if you are used to covering ground, it gives you the opportunity to actually do this trip and do it legally because you can get a day pass and that's only six dollars put it in your car we dropped the other car off at Lee's Ferry with a park pass in the window and the you need permits if you're camping overnight and those are sold out or you know spoken for months and months in advance I did a quick check just to see where we left. And there was nothing available for months. 
So the only way to do this whole thing is really to do it straight through. And Karen has been thinking about this one for a while, but it's... Four to five days to commit. Yeah. So it just changed the perspective, the thinking. A little lighter pack, although my pack is sort of heavy, so is carries. We're bringing all our liquid. I've probably got three and a half gallons with me. Um, actually, maybe even a little bit more. And he's got a couple gallons as well. So we should be walking out of here with extra water. That's the idea. But um, there are a couple different ways to get in. This Buckskin Gulch joins up with Perea River up a little ways. Or I think it's 16 miles from where we started. And we are a little over six right now, so we got about 10 miles. There's nothing to come into this place. Wire Pass, where the Petroglyphs were, is a uh, slight shortcut cuts up some of the canyon. It's a nice little approach down another slot canyon. And that's, the confluence there is four and a half miles that, between that and the, the, the Buckskin Gulch, wire past the Buckskin Gulch. This is the payoff, being out here by ourselves, partially because of the early start. 20 people a day are given permits to get into this place. And that's it. And they're camping. So in theory, if it takes, let's say, three days for people to do this, or maybe four in some cases, um, we should be passing 40 people maybe today at some point, provided things go well. Um, there's going to be one spot where, if the beta is correct, we might need a 15-foot rope. So we do have a couple lines that we can string up and pull. One's about 20 feet, one's about 15 feet. So if we need them, great. We might leave them there. Carrie's knee has been potentially bugging him, so he's going to evaluate, although I think the evaluation will probably be continue forward because even going back will be quite a hike. Um, but that's, that's probably the time to access it, or to assess it rather, will be uh, close to the confluence of the Pariba and Buckskin, but not all the way there. Otherwise, it's still 16 miles back. And then, you know, I guess it's a little shorter, but <laughs> the Pariba, we're going to be in and out of water. Gosh, just look at this. Oh my, you see the first light hitting that? We are at a little squeeze point here and heading up on that little log jam. And then does it go down or? Oh, how interesting. this just log soup when it's there. Definitely people have come this way though. Like it over there? Or should we go through here? I think right around here. In the slots, in places like this where you get a jumble of boulders or logs or something. Oh, there's a thing. Might be our first people. Yep. Or it's just emergency water, maybe. Yeah, I think it's emergency water. They put a stash out for folks who aren't getting prepared. Wow. We continuing along the canyon. The walls are hundreds of feet and it keeps getting narrowed down to looks like maybe 12 feet wide and then probably even a little narrower. And it'll be dark when we go in there. 
that may be another place where we end up having to go through a little bit of a swamp or hole. A lot of times, see this mud here, that would be pretty gnarly to get through. It's getting darker and darker, as you can see. But it helps that some people have been through because it created a dry path through. So uh, we've gone almost eight miles and seen zero people. We're at our three hour mark and we are more or less on track. Then it opens up again. You can just see, like if that's, I don't know, that's probably 300 foot wall, maybe a little bit more. Not too shabby. Flash floods are definitely an issue here. Uh, so if it rains and water's coming down from that way, water goes up quite a ways. Right above us, if you can see that log, that looks like about a 12 inch log, and it is legit 65 feet up. So at some point, water was pummeling down here, and that log just wedged in when there was 65 feet of water coming through here. That would have been a sight to behold. But I guess if there's any danger ever, you'd always want to be looking around for places to scramble up. Like this little section we're in right here, you would have no hope of scrambling up. That would be it. So <laughs> be aware, know your weather if you're coming down here. We're just talking about videos and the history uh, or my history of producing videos and friends of mine who have lots of followers, millions of followers or hundreds of thousands of followers who have done quite well parlaying video making into you know some sort of comfortable augmentation of their living. And Carrie was just talking about a lot of the content, which is like mountaineering or, or that sort of thing. Mine are long, but I'm always talking to you. And I'm trying to provide an interesting perspective, some background information, and that sort of thing. And I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, because I've definitely gotten comments here and there like, hey, this is so beautiful. Why do you want to show your face? And I understand that, totally. But <laughs> at the same time, if I can have both, I think both Carrie and I are in the frame right here, and you've got some of the canyon, then it becomes more interesting. And these long form videos give people a bit of a different experience. So some folks who watch these are, you know, in an office for a while, on a treadmill. Uh, it's an alternative to listening to a book on tape or something like that. And it's a way of connecting with people that's a bit, a bit different. So these, these long form videos, although we're also talking. You get to spend time with the storyteller face to face. Yeah. See, see, the, see the story come out of the, out of the face, connect the face with the, with the, it's an emotional connection at that point. And the cool it's, thing, the cool thing is I, I will be hiking somewhere and all of a sudden someone will see me and be like, oh, I know you. Like it's happened to the weirdest places. The yeah. Wonderland Trail and uh, I know you but I fear what you do. Yeah, the Wonderland Trail, a video I still haven't put together, more than a year old, sorry, Wing. Um, but we came across a guy who was like, you know, I watched your, your West Coast Trail video and I was a street runner and I totally converted to trails. I saw that you did that and I thought, oh wow, if you can do that one week hike in a day, I can probably do that too. His name's Jeremy. And he, he, uh, he, we, we were able to run on the trail with him a, a little bit that day. I was in Haleakala doing the traverse of Haleakala, the Kaupo Gap, and um, with a couple friends. And in the crater, after walking up, we asked these, these people to give us a, uh, take a picture of us. And he looks at me and goes, are you, do you do videos? <laughs> like, yeah. He's like, ah, I know you. So I keep, wow, oh, interesting. Look at that. That is just stuck there. That is a photo op. Take the high water. First campers are about maybe 
Nine miles out. Good morning. <laughs> Come from? White House. Oh, White House. Got it, got it. There's some nice pools down there. Oh, really? Yeah, we've been wondering. We only encountered one. But that's from White House. How many from here to the confluence of Pariba? Or Pariba, sorry. Here to the confluence, 23? That's exactly what I like. Perfect. Yes, yeah, okay. That's great news right there. <laughs> okay, so. Most of them are, you know, There's one that gets up there. Yeah. Yeah. Most of them are Quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. And I guess our backpacks will be okay too because they're. Just over nutsack level. <laughs> this is so cool. And look up. That's like three and a half feet wide in places. It narrows down at the bottom. But there's just that little crack of light up at the very top. Probably 300, 400 feet up. And then you're just going through this where it is genuinely dark. Footing is sort of rocky, a little mud here and there, a little sand, but it is gorgeous, just gorgeous. And to, like, to the point here, you could definitely do this in a day hike. Park at Wire Pass, come down, and then return. Oh, yeah, look at that. All right, Carrie. Good work. Our second mud hole. Smells a little... Stale, but that was one we could not avoid. I don't think there's going to be 22. I think those folks were talking about descending from the north to the confluence where we're going to go. And they may be counting things that are we can avoid, like this little one here. That's too dark for you to see. This is a proper. This one. It's hard to tell how deep these things are. So I will go across. This may be one where I get a little wet. You can also cheat one side or the other, kind of feel which way is a little higher or lower. So hold that for me. Pull up my pants as high as I can get them. Sporting a nice look. Let's see how deep we go. Oh yeah, a little mud. If you're careful with where you step, you can often find a higher point. Oh yeah, but this is getting deep. I'm gonna. I think so. I think this is this is probably the deep point they were talking about. I'm trying to just stay, keep my. Precious goods dry. Oh, nope, that's going to be a good step there. Unless it's not deeper over there. Nope. I think I'm going to muscle through it, carry. Yeah. Oh, no, that's it. That was it. I think. I think. <laughs> oh. Let's see. I think. I think I just barely escaped. <laughs> so, let's see. Mr. Sherman, wet. Yeah. Mr. Ward, Dry. not wet. <laughs> Sorry for that shot, but <laughs> that might be the worst we get based on the description of the people before us. We are getting some crazy lighting and crazy angles here so pictures 
go nuts if you're a proper photographer here. I was trying to run through. <laughs> There's a... <laughs> Carrie taking another picture. It opened up a little above us. Look at this. I'm going to try with my app. Your app? It's so beautiful. This section. It's sort of crazy how you've got this thing that is about shoulder width. And look at this. This is legitimately shoulder width. And then you go through. And good lord, it's just straight. All these curves, the flare at the bottom, so sexy. And then up here, just flat. Wow, 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 wow. This is so neat to see. The quality of the rock keeps changing and changing. The trip is, we've been going for, I don't know, 12 miles now or something. And there's no big drop, significant. For the most part, it's flat. It's dropped somewhat over the 40 miles, I think we drop, or 42 miles, we drop uh, 2,000 feet, I think. So. Oh my gosh, look at this. This is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. The terrain has changed again, these big blocks. Not, still in a canyon, but it's not so tight. It's opened up a bunch. It looks like, like these flat pieces broken off at some point. Changed the whole complexion of the place. Um, I'm guessing we have less than five miles to the confluence, but we don't know because uh, basically no GPS signal in there. I've got a Strava file, which I'll try and link to on the video. So you can see it, but I don't know how accurate it'll be because of the uh, <laughs> lack of a signal in the places where we've been spending time. And you can see we're just going straight into that crack up ahead, which is going to mean less signal again. Are you getting anything? Nope. Nothing. And it just goes back into the darkness. Log stuck up there. Totally surreal. We've just done our first stop and discovered, let's we'll squeeze that bottle. That our water bottles, look at that. At the end of the so maybe you gotta put it upside down. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we uh, are leaking water everywhere. My back was getting wet and he's got a dry bag, so Carrie's bag had water in the bottom of it, so. There, because it's watertight. Good thing we brought as much water as you did because with these leaky things. <laughs> Amateur hour, man. What's up with this? We have like five of those Nalgene's next time. I put my backpack in front because this one has these ridiculous focal point frame parts which just dig straight in. And I was just thinking, and Carrie's like, hey, look at that rock. Because I was just considering it's got to be rocks that get stuck like that right there wedged there. Now it's, I don't know, maybe 75, 70 feet up. Just stuck. A giant, giant boulder. Pretty cool. Uh, we've still, we've done probably 13 miles, maybe a little bit more. So we're close to a third of the way. It's uh, 9.50. So we're going for five and a half hours. And um, <laughs> so far, so good with respect to pacing and calories. Um, losing our water in all three of our big water containers is a bit of a drag, but they're all upside down in our bags now, so hopefully going to contain it for a while. We've got enough other things that towards the end we will be able to probably come out with extra water at the end as well. So, look at this. Our next set of campers have a dog here keeping guard. Has alerted them to our presence. Lost a booty up there which we found. But we also heard that the, uh, the rock fall up here is probably where we're 
going to use the rope, potentially. Do you have a rope? <laughs> All right, well, that might be the trick. If you, if you don't find us, we probably went down one of those ropes. Where are you attending to go out? Ah, okay. We'll see what we can do to find maybe some steps. The hits keep coming with these ultra deep, huge slots. It just tightens up, widens out for a little bit, and then it just tightens up again. It's like a broken record, right? You just keep coming into one and go, oh my word, look at this. Next one, oh my god, look at this. Next one, holy mackerel. The form of the rocks, the flatness of the trail, really remarkable. You can see the bottom, there's all this stuff. Clearly they were standing water here at some point, and it's pretty much evaporated away. And now you've got just this mud which is slowly cracking and disappearing. So. Wow. <laughs> We're just amazed at the terrain. It's so shockingly flat. There's no real significant blockages except for whatever this rock following is. Climb is. And wherever you look, it's just wild. I think we found the place that they're worried about. There's a couple pieces of webbing in line. It looks like you can stay up high on this side. You can stay up high on that side or drop down the middle. Drop down the middle. Alright, let's see what we find. Yeah? This is what stops the campers. I doubt it's going to stop us, but it'll be worth taking a look. Really? We found our drop. Steps. So with the rope. Oh yeah. It's a freaking. It's freak the rope. ladder. It's lower the. Uh, we don't need a rope. We need these two. No, yeah, yeah, I agree. We're good with these. Don't know whether they're packed now. Yeah, it's a good idea. So we're going to pull up the rope, tie the packs on, and then drop. How's the other rope looking? Well, I would go down on this one. And this one is wedged into the crack. That's actually helpful. How do you feel? Yeah. I'm okay. They're pretty cut out, aren't they? Um, it's just a toe hold, but it's enough. That's good. Can you see where this rope's choked off? Yeah, it's down on, it's on the deck. Underneath. I'm trying to stay on my feet instead of relying on my hands. Here comes Carrie down, seeing what the descent is like, trying to use mostly feet. Yeah, there. There's one on the right, that's it. There's one more under on the right, and then you can just kind of jump across. There you go, nicely done. Now just grab the rope low and just hop across. If you want. Ooh, look at that. Like a cat. Good job, bud. Dude, that was, that was, that was a lot of talking up there. They're going to do that with a dog. Yeah. <laughs> that, one, that, one. that is funny. There's a 55 gallon drum there that has been wedged in. Oh my word. This is a big rock over my head. Yep, two big rocks actually. We are 
a little over 16 miles in, which means almost if my if the Strava is accurate. It's so hard to pick a GPS satellite out of the thing when that's your sky window there. Maybe four degrees of the 180 degrees of sky. Um, but it is making a track. Uh, if it's at our trailhead, it said 16 miles to the Perea River. So it's acting that's at all accurate that the Perea River should be coming up shortly. But we don't know for sure. Um, I think, luckily, Carrie's knee has been behaving. Oh, look at this horse poop. I think that's maybe horse. Someone rode a horse in here. That might be from the White White House parking lot or whatever. Gosh, look at this. Woo! This is, and you can just see where the levels of water were. Recede, 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 recede. We've been very fortunate with the water levels. We've been haven't had to get that wet. But you may not be able to rely on that. The water's cold, but we haven't really needed that much warm gear. Maybe tonight we will, but maybe not as well. We've got probably enough stuff right now to to get the rest of the way out. The only little wrinkle is our leaking water, which I still think we have, we overdid the water, so we should be fine. And there are springs that are located in a number of places up here that we could probably drink direct if we want, or Carrie also has a life straw, so we could filter it through a straw if we wanted. This is our pathway. It's, and we were just saying, if we're 16 miles in, there's a good chance we've been in the slot canyon for 13 miles at least. That is insane for running down a slot canyon. And we had one little semi-technical thing with that, that boulder field to get through. But the rest of it's been pretty much a walk in the park. This is actual quicksand. Look at this. You gotta be in the sun though. Back back up just a tiny bit. Back up, back up, back up into the sun. There you go. Look at that. You, he's just sinking into this. Dude, don't sink too far. Oh my god. That's actual quicksand. That's crazy. Yeah, now you gotta wash your, your feet off. There's, for the first time, actual flow here. Not much, but water is actually moving through here. It's not muddy, it's more sandy at the moment. But again, we haven't quite gotten to the confluence. Every now and then you'll see like a cave. I don't know if you can see there's a little cave. It is super flat because of all this sand and the water that's just running through. And there are just massive walls. See if you got a signal? This is incredible. You can play a soccer game here. We're also both realized neither of us really brought sunscreen. So we're gonna hopefully find something that's got some to to us. Ill prepared. Clear water running here. And then here is the Perea River, which is kind of silty, muddyish water. And we are gonna be following that from here on. Well, congrats, man. Great to hear. You ready to get your feet wet? It looks like we are just in a canyon for a while longer. Read this. It looks like we're going through a frappuccino. That's about the color in the temperature. Texture on the walls is fascinating. Does this run all year round? I don't know. Yeah, but it's carrying a lot of silt. You can't do that all the time. Finding the right lines, because if you step off the line, suddenly you are literally sticking into muck soup. Woo! 
<laughs> but luckily you just get straight back into the river and wash it off. That's sinking in like three inches, four inches. feet are really slippery how'd that happen you see where it builds up in the flood section and then as it subsides it leaves high water mark almost like a wedding cake there are all these different layers Carrie sliding on the mud getting all mucked up turn around and see sliding into first We're actually oh yeah Second, actually, right? <laughs> so it looks like we're in for many, many miles of walking through milky coffee in this canyon. I think we've got, well, we have a marathon or less to go. It's just turned noon, which means we've been going for eight hours. Pretty much another eight will happen, and then probably a few more, because we're at 20, probably 21 miles now. We're going to have to go long days, because Carrie's had a couple ups and downs. A little down. <laughs> yeah, one down. Hit the mud. <laughs> uh, but the. The fact is, he's now probably at least six or seven miles farther than he's ever done a hike, which is fantastic, and he's still feeling well, a stretch. moving well, yeah, in, in a single day, and we've got, we're not halfway yet, so we're going to stop around halfway, we've got these leaky water containers, we're trying to balance them out again, lighten, lighten up the load, and take in a few more calories, so that is the plan for the moment. I think it's gonna be a late late night arrival for sure. And we're talking about potentially going to visit a super cool rock formation. Uh, white pockets. White pockets. Similar in the way more with access. Four by four road, deep sand, but similar formations and actually a little bit more varied. People put it, put it a little slightly above the wave when they drink it. On the to-do list. Huh. That would be fun to do that. We could crash in the vehicles again. Take the car back to the his RAV4 where we slept in last night. Have a little bit of a rest. Then go in to White Pockets. Grab a bite to eat afterwards. I gotta head to Vegas and fly back to Vancouver. That's the plan. Oh, by the way, date-wise, it is May 26th, you think? I think it's May 25th or 6th. What day? Wednesday. Uh, well, no, we're doing uh, in April. We're in April right now, man. Oh, yeah, April, sorry. April 4th, right? April 25th, I think. 25th. Between the two of us, we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll have to figure this thing out. A few freshwater sources here that... Just kind of dripping out of the rock. These are springs, so it's clear water instead of what we've been walking through. We're down on water and we're feeling that load up there. We're just crisscrossing this river as it flows down. You kind of cut the bend a little bit, so you're always having to go from one side to the other because the river goes out wide. And there are these. Formations. Look at this thing. Just, it's huge. I'm just hanging on through here. It's like the little Kerry Ward personal tunnel. See, only Kerry Ward can go through. Not Kerry Ward. Reach again. It's swept across to the other wall, and we cross. The to about mid shin right now, although definitely it's higher. Just reading the lines of water on the wall, 
all different points. If, you park, if it was high, I don't think you'd really want to be going through here. Or if you would, you could probably come through here pretty easily in an inflatable kayak. I mean, if it was that high, pretty close to halfway through, we are emptying our shoes and socks of mud and sand and rocks. There's a bunch of it built up. It sort of changes the way your shoe fits. And it's a nice little break to change it up. I think we've been going for, let's see, 1.30, 4.30, nine hours now, almost. So take the socks off and all the crud in there disappears. It's a good stop. Just coming along and notice this pile of red, fresh, fallen sandstone and sand. And if you look up, stand back a little, you can see right next to my finger, right behind my finger, a whole section of rock that's come down and boom, right there. That might even be today, dude. Because that's, yeah, that has not been washed away at all. Something came down. That would be exciting to see that happen from just far enough away that you're got your adrenaline going but not freaking out. I'm under a racket one helicopter makes. Good lord. There's one way to cover this ground quickly. Which we are not particularly doing today. But we are getting a vastly different perspective. The best spring we found. You can see it coming right up from the ground. It doesn't even come down the crack, it's coming up from the ground. It's a good flow. There are a bunch of campgrounds. Little camp areas just out of the water's way in this canyon. Most folks don't try and do the entire thing at once as we are um, so it's nice if you're carrying a bunch of gear to be able to take a break and have a camp but it is just incessant walking through mud and sand and through the river again and again and again Mr. feel up a little bit today now it's just soldiering forward no matter what. Canyon is starting to open up and we've got different type of foliage around. Before there was none whatsoever, now there is actually. And the walls are not quite so steep, not quite so high. So we're getting into probably, there may still be big canyon stuff in front of us. In fact, I think there are still a number of wiggles and squiggles on the map uh, before we have it straightened out. And this uh, feeds the Colorado River at the bottom, right where we're going, at Lee's Ferry. So basically, the grand bottom of the Grand Canyon. Carrie's up there soldiering on forward. I think he's feeling it a little bit. Getting maybe a tad tight, but continuing to move. That's the important thing. Our pace has slowed a little bit, but we are still moving forward, which is the important thing in these instances. Always looking for the dry ground, the high ground, the non-muddy, quick sandy ground. And I'm using Carrie's GoPro Hero 5. Doesn't have the image stabilization, hyper smooth image stabilization. Does have image stabilization, but let's see how that compares to the the Hero Seven Black that I lost. Continues to be lovely. We're moving definitely slower right now. I think Carrie is getting into the 
dark place that you have to go to sometimes to finish this kind of stuff. And we were talking just about having to go through some suffering and uncomfortable feeling physically, mentally, to get, to break through so you can do this longer stuff. Like right now we're 10 miles farther than his longest day hike ever. And we've got another 13, 14 miles to go maybe, maybe 15. I don't know, uh, but we'll be finishing at night. But with this pace as well, it'll be probably a little longer. Um, probably looking at, I'm hoping before 10 p.m., but it might be after 10 p.m. We'll just see how he does. But hats off to him for signing up and coming out here. He's not an ultra runner. He's been doing some mountain biking, trying to amp up mileage and endurance. So this is just like sustained effort. Good work! How you feeling? <laughs> At one point, someone was trying to pump water out of this thing. And it looks like a mouse has made a home of that motor through that big hole. This was where you pump the water out of. <laughs> Little piece of history there. I don't know how old a Fairbanks Morris motor is for a pump. But it's sort of old anyway. Look at this. It is covered. That is one solid mass of caterpillars. It's all over the trees. Oh my god. Look. I don't know if you can see because the light. There's probably 30 or 40 of them on this tree alone. There are so many caterpillars. Well, this is probably, it seems like it might be about three or four miles longer than what we thought initially. 28 miles from the continents, and we've been moving steadily for a while. We probably have 13 to 14 to go, so probably another six hours maybe before midnight. We'll see. So, one of many dead trees here, although this one is dead for good reason. Look at this. Look at this. It has been chewed up and chewed up and chewed up by a beaver. I'm guessing. Look at that. He didn't actually take it down, though. I don't know what he's trying to take that tree down for. He's going to try and make the mother of all dams here. <laughs> I did not expect to see a tree gnawed by a beaver out here. So, it seems like Carrie's uh, quads are kind of hammered, feet and ankles are kind of hurting. But it's not a surprise since we're at closing in on 40 miles, which is two and a half times longer than he's ever done. And he hasn't been really running to train for this, so pretty impressive he can come out and do this. I'm grateful just to have an adventure, but there are these sections that bypass big turns, all kinds of foliage, cacti, and grass, and stuff. You can see the water's even up here somehow, sometimes. That gets you out of the river for a little while. Pushing through some brush and high grass and stuff. And then eventually dropping back down into the river. Uh, easy does it. With thrashed quads, this is hard. Well, we're losing our light. It's about 8.13, which means we've been going for almost 16 hours. We 
probably have 12 miles left and it's going to be dark. Video is not going to be good at that point. It's making sure that Carrie can keep moving. So I'll probably turn this off. Battery's down quite a ways as well. So I won't say too much unless something really exciting pops up. This is where you just grind it out. You build character. You get tough. You grit it out and get to the end. This is where <laughs> we we hiked 40 miles, according to Strava, to this point. Just to get so you can feel what it's like to be here. This is where the development happens. This is where you break through. He's already almost three times farther than he's ever gone in a day. Feet hurting, but moving forward, great attitude, no complaints. You gotta appreciate that. Well, coming up on 20, one hours and we are now going quite slow and we're probably five five and a half miles away looking to get this thing done in under 24 it's dark trail is non-existent and we're avoiding quicksand as best we can well we're just about to hit two marathons uh, it's been going about 24 hours, just under, 52.3 miles, and this is our route. Five back, 50, how many miles, let's see how many miles we did on the Strava. It's almost 5 o'clock in the morning. And uh, it's not going to tell us just this moment. I'll show you later. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. Congrats. I appreciate your patronage. I wanted to say how this ended up with Kerry. It ended up being a benchmark experience for him. Uh, aside from some dark moments about two-thirds to three-quarters of the way through when he realized how far he had to go to get to the very end, this was something that he surprised himself. And... He thought that perhaps there would even be lasting damage done and he wouldn't be able to walk for two weeks. But I told him, your effort level has been pretty low the whole day. Really, you're just walking the whole day. I think you're probably going to be okay. And sure enough, the next couple of days turned out to be pretty easy for him. And <laughs> he has a good story to tell. So with that in mind, if you are inclined to offer some support, please do subscribe to the video. I have a Instagram channel that I channel good energy into. I post fairly regularly. It'd be great if you subscribe to that. And if you really want to do something special, I have a Patreon account and you can offer support through that. The link will be in the description of this video. So get out there, tackle hard things, inspire others by inspiring yourself. Carry out.